doing well. How are you doing? We're doing good. Thanks. I'm going to call this Thursday, June 17th, 2020, 2021 meeting of Springfield Historic Commission to order. Um, I already kind of explained about the forum, a forum which we have the forum of we have five, so we're good. Um, Commissioners Walsh, Belton, Duquette, McFarland, and Kroll are present on the Zoom call today. Um, let me just go over the uh, the guidelines for 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 the uh, the. the uh, Meeting in order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during COVID-19. Although we are seem to be on the outskirts of that, but we're still under those guidelines. Uh, while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distancing guidelines, City of Springfield is providing public notice that it will conduct a public hearing using remote technology. Copies of said petitions, text, and maps may be requested by email or phone. Email should be directed to the Office of Planning and Economic Development at A A L L E N A Allen at SpringfieldCityHall.com or by calling 413-787-6020. To view the public hearing, it is on the Focus Springfield Community TV website. Uh, public comment will be, be taken in two segments. The first public comment period will take place prior to the meeting discussion. The second public comment period will take place after the meeting will remain open for 24 hours. To provide for public comment in writing, mail Springfield Store Commission 70 Tapley Street in Springfield, Mass 01104, or email a allen at springfieldcityall.com. To provide for public comment by voicemail, number is 413-750-3223. Messages received will be played to the Store Commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commenters should state their name, address, and company or organizational affiliation in addition to the items their comment pertains to. Voice messages received 24 hours before the hearing we put to the record during the public hearing and comments after the meeting will be entered at the continued hearing date. Uh, voice messages are limited to two minutes. Uh, so the, for, for those of you who are, who are at the first hearing, all those, there won't be votes on those, app, on those uh, applications today. Uh, we continue to allow for that public commentary period. And also, please give us your name, uh, address, company, or affiliation, even tonight when you begin talking about whichever application you're here to, to talk about. So, given all that, first on our agenda is 120 Harvard Street. This is an application for certificate of hardship uh, regarding replacement windows. Now, the uh, owner sent us a picture of the window, the potential change to the window with it painted a darker color and with exterior uh, grids in place. I'm not sure if all the commissioners got a look at that. There we go. Um, Any commissioners have any other? Is the petitioner on with us? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. There you are. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, nothing. I sent to Alvin and I said I'm hoping for a favorable ruling, and uh, that's the best I could come up with. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions for the petitioner? No. Uh, it's Walter Kroll, uh, sir. I just want to confirm this would be for all, all of the windows. Forty, I believe. Yes, all of them. Yes. I just, I just did one. I wanted to yeah. get the. If, if it's okay, I'll just go ahead and make them. Yeah. Look I just want, them yeah. There. I just wanted to confirm you're committing to doing all of them. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the application says forty-five. I think forty-five replacement windows. Okay. Yeah, they were forty. Okay, 40. Um, okay, uh, any other? If not, I'd entertain a... Yes, I have a question for the petitioner. How long has he owned the property? Uh, about two years. About two years? 
Yes. Have you done any window maintenance work in those two years? Uh, no. What happened was when I bought the house, was it was actually nobody was living there. There was a lot of water damage and all that. So I've been trying to. We live next door, so we've been trying. To, we, I work on it slowly, one piece at a time. Now, if I, if I remember correctly, you've already replaced all the windows. Yes, they have. They have been replaced. Yes. Yeah. So the application is under hardship, uh, and I mean the windows have all been done, and we're he's trying to to make them more compatible under a hardship application. So what he's offered Tom is just to to paint them a more appropriate color and put an ex, attach an exterior grid. Okay. And that's that's what he's here for. And um, that's that's all the application is about. Paint is uh, allowing him to paint them, you know, to, to paint and add add the uh, the grid. Um, any other questions or or otherwise I'd entertain a, a, a motion to accept the application for a certificate of hardship at 120 Harvard Street. Um, I apologize, we do have a letter. Um, do we? Is it right here and I'm missing it or what? No, the letter just came in about uh, 445. Oh, okay. If you could uh, add, add that to the record, it'd be great. Let's see, it's from Mr. Uh, David Gaby. Um, in response to 120 Harvard Street, uh, at the last meeting, I heard the presentation of the owner of 120 Harvard Street in support of his request for approval of vinyl replacement windows that have already been installed. As I remember, this was presented as a hardship. As a background, please be aware that I sold the house some years ago and it was generally well maintained for many decades and there was no problem with the windows that I recall. Also, I drove by the house and good work has been done on the porches, but there is no excuse for the introduction of white divided pane sash to the house. It is very intrusive. In defense, I'm sorry, in, in deference to the efforts being made by other McKnight neighbors to preserve their historic homes properly, these kinds of petitions should not be allowed. It would be grossly unfair to the hundreds of property owners following the rules. It goes on, but I think that's pretty much the gist of. Uh, well, let me just ask: Is the goes on relative specifically to this petition? I mean, to this application. Uh, let's see. Okay, so further, however, I would make these three suggestions: one, interim authorization if the sash can be painted black and all grills not duplicating original grill patterns can be removed. These windows could be allowed to remain on an interim basis, perhaps until resources are available to restore the original sash. Uh, two, uh, agreement to restore. This should be conditional on the owner's agreement to preserve the original sash if it has not been disposed of by the contractor and restore and reinstall and reinstall it or new original quality sash if, if it is not in the future when the new sash has failed or when resources are available for restoration. Three, create a cause of action against window contractors. From the narrative provided, it appears that the homeowner's wife was persuaded to illegally replace the windows while the homeowner was away. The contractor or window sales organization is a professional and knew or should have known that this action was illegal and environmentally irresponsible. And perhaps we should ask the homeowner's and a homeowner and his wife as a condition of not being made to remove the windows immediately to assign either the commission and or city or an interested civic group or groups with authorization to sue this contractor or window sales organization to ensure that this does not happen again and to recover the cost of correcting the damage done by their apparently illegal and irresponsible actions. This kind of thing is happening too much and should be addressed in such a way that those promoting the damage to our architectural heritage are bearing a share of the responsibility. Naturally, I would be happy to assist in developing means of following up this matter if the commission is interested in such in assistance okay. and can be reached at uh, dgaby1105 at gmail.com to discuss 
moving forward to create an approach to this ongoing issue of inappropriate window replacement. Okay. Is there any other public commentary on this? So that, that's it. Okay. Again, back to commissioners. Any commissioner questions? So, okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of hardship at 120 Harvard Street for the, for the painting and additional uh, attachment of grids, ex exterior grids on the 40 windows. So moved. Okay, is there a second? I'm not hearing a second. Second. Oh, okay, thank you, Bill. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Um, I do have, I have a couple of issues that in the discussion period I'd like to throw out to the commissioners. Uh, whether, because I do agree that, that this, we have to make this is, it, it can't look like this is an acceptable way for people to do business in a historical district. Um, but I also understand the potential hardship of paying for 40 windows and then having to pay for 40 more windows that are likely to be slightly more expensive the next time around. Uh, is there some middle road? Is there some middle road that we can, in fact, Attorney Shuchuk, you might be in on this one, relative to uh, accepting these with, you know, conditional that, that uh, any other change in a window would be, I mean, because, you know, they'll end up back before us replacing these windows somewhere down the road and that it would be uh, a more historic recreation when it is, is done the next time. Or is there a time frame? Is there any other condition anybody would like to talk about? But that's all I've got. Okay, I'm hearing no discussion under the motion, so let me just call the vote. Okay, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? No. Commissioner Duquette? No. Commissioner Belton? No. Commissioner Walsh is no. Uh, this this petition has been denied. Um, wow. I excuse me, sir. Yeah. I got. A, I have a. I have a. I have a question on the person who wrote the the on the person who wrote. I mean the public commentary because yeah. we are, we did not buy the house from that person because we live next door on 114. And if you go to the records over there, that place was total, it was total, you couldn't even see the house when you bought the house. So when somebody comes and says that, well, maybe with the time they saw the house was in good order, but when we got the house, it was a total mess. Yeah. So uh, when somebody comes and says, because I could have sold the house, we've lived next door for more than 15 years. And the only reason I bought the house or we bought the house was because it was a nice song to us. It was, there was a pool out there where we were getting dead animals and they had to be done to, to have the pool down. So the place was overgrown with weed. You couldn't even see the house. There was water damage. So in respect to that, we tried to restore as much as we could. Yes, we made a mistake. But if you come to the house, we haven't changed anything. Anything yes. else we have, I have come to the historical commission. So it looks like, wow, well, it looks like it's, it's, it looks like somebody, I, I, I am sure we have attachment to the houses and all that. He might have sold the house to, I did, he they didn't sell to me. No, I, I, I understand can assure that. You, I, I, I can understand. assure you that if he had been left that way, so when it comes to that way, it looks like, we are being punished for something that, I mean, I say it was a mistake. I'm, I'm not saying, I, I, I'm owning up to the mistake. I'm not refuting that. And if finally it was gonna come to this, I have spent, I have spent over a hundred thousand restoring that house. 
I, we, we actually understand that what, what we can't, what we have to do within our guidelines is what's going to maintain the historic, uh, uh, Commissioner Walsh, may I read the hardship um, for the McKnight district? Go ahead, Commissioner McFarland. Um, a hardship issued for those changes that are not appropriate, but which may be necessary due to economic, physical, social, or special conditions. Thank you. Uh, it's, I just would, I mean, I'm, Mr. Muhan, the, the question I have is, you, you've, you've just said you've lived in the in the district for 15 years and you have come before us. Why didn't you come before us for the windows? Did the did the window company suggest you didn't have to? Did anything like that happen? I am not sure what the conversation was because like I said, my wife was part of that. I wasn't, I mean, we, we really wanted to, we've been doing this process slowly from out of our pocket. I go to work and I pay, I've been working on that house for the last, since we bought it, like almost two years ago, every sure. single money, I put my money in the house because if I didn't want to spend the money or the character, there's a reason why I live there and I love the houses and I do it and I do it to the best of what I can. I if this was a mistake, I could have, because based on what we've spent, restoring the house to what it is right now and the cost of the house, of course, of the windows would have been minimal compared to what we have spent. So it was not, it was not done to spite anybody. It was not done to make it look like it was not. And here I am. I am trying to do the best I can with what I have. Well, well we we understand that, sir. The the problem is that it's just, these windows are just not fitting the guidelines. Had you, had you come before us ahead of time, we might have we would have been able to point you in the right direction, and maybe a, your your application would have had either a different window or a, you know proper grids and the things like that that we could have we could have worked with ahead of time but because you didn't come in front of us those things are not historically accurate and i apologize for this but but this has been voted down so we actually have to end the discussion on it so um, what's the what's, so what's the re, what's the recourse well the the, the recourse is if you, if you find if you have an, another potential solution you could you could put it in front of us again, but those windows are not approved for the house. Okay, let me ask you, I, I, I don't wanna drag this. I don't wanna bring up the historical thing, but if I drive around the historical commission, the historical district there, yeah. right? Yes. I'm not saying I did that because of that, but there are so many houses there that do not meet the requirements of those, those windows. Yeah, well, we understand that some people do it. And we we uh, you know we wish everybody would come in front of us and and just discuss the way it would be done properly, um, but it doesn't mean that everybody else should just put in any kind of windows they want and, uh, and no no and I, damage and I'm, the and I'm, not, uh, and I'm not saying and I'm not here to distribute the, the this historical stuff. Alvin, I have been there to him so many numerous times, even for the house that we live in. Live alone 120. I have so well, many I, I, applications I, on 114. Right. I, and I understand that. And I apologize because I have to cut this off. But my question, my like the question I want to leave you with is, if you've been before us and you, you've lived there so long, I would just, it, it would have been, it would have saved you a lot of aggravation to just come in front of us for that. I'm just, uh, I'm just I have telling to, you. I have to was, move on. I have to, I have to move on to my next item. Uh, any other okay, questions? I, you can, if you can forward any other questions to Alvin Allen, it would be great. So what's the, what's the next request now? To, do, to remove the windows? I'll, I'll send you an email tomorrow. Or I'm, I'm sorry, on uh, Monday. Uh, commissioners, can you just give a reason for the denial just so I can put... Yeah, I need that, uh, please. Well, I think it's been denied because there, the, the the windows themselves are not uh, acceptable historic replacement, and then the remediation he has suggested, uh, I don't think satisfied, uh, you know, a kind of a, a, a it's something in between. It's not. It's just not historically sufficient to to vote for it, and that's my opinion. If someone, another commissioner, wants to jump in, go ahead. 
I think that's just sufficient enough. I just need needed something to put on their certificate on his certificate of uh, denial. All right. I mean, so to clarify or, or to just to restate, the windows themselves are not acceptable in a historical uh, district, and the remediation was insufficient. Thank you. Okay, let's move to uh, ninety-two Cornell Street. Commissioner Walsh, for this particular matter, I did receive a letter from the property owner allowing um, Mr. Gaby to represent on his behalf. Okay, well, I'm, and in my pile of files, which I picked up, I'm not seeing it. Let's see what, what I did here. Bear with me, everybody. Alvin, you're going to have to, do you have this something you can put up? Yeah, I'll share the, uh, the application. Here because I don't have it in front of me here. I thought I had them lined them all up and had them ready to go. Okay, an application for certificate of appropriateness and non-applicability. Paint the exterior of the home with colors to match existing restored third floor windows using new paint and putty on original sash. Remove existing modern doors and reinstall original double doors with all trim and siding to match original. So Commissioner Walsh, I believe the other items were approved at the, um, uh, the what? Yeah. Yeah, the previous meeting. So I think the only thing that's left is, are the, the, the doors that are being uh, restored from the basement. Okay. I apologize to everybody out there that I don't have this file so I can do this in a timely manner. So we're gonna have to, so we're just talking about the doors now. So I don't have my notes or anything from the last meeting here. Yes, the other matters were approved under non-applicability. Okay. And the doors were, I know there were pictures of the doors and they were, they were restoring doors which I think is usually a pretty good thing. Um, and that the, is the petitioner, can the petitioner just fill us in again on what, how they're gonna put, do the doors? Is that they're gonna restore everything to the original kind of wooden trim as best they can? We're, we're going to replace the, um, the trim with flat casings consistent with the windows, which we think are what was on the house originally from what we can see in the picture. Yeah. And if there's a need to fill in the siding, we're gonna fill in the siding with new cedar clapboards. Okay. That's what I thought. I just, uh, like I said, I don't have it. I'm going through this all again and I'm not seeing it here, so. Okay. Do any commissioners have any questions of the petitioner? David, just out of curiosity, are they going to get painted or are they going to stay with natural wood? They're, they're already painted now, but the plan is to strip them down to natural wood. So when they're done, when they're finished, they'll be natural wood with the glass. Right. And, and the, the glass in the top part, and we, we think it's going to be golden oak. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay, I would entertain a motion under uh, under uh, appropriateness for 92 Cornell Street to reinstall the original doors and repair and replace trim to to to, to historic like original 
David, how, does that fit? You're going to make that look as original as you can, correct? As original as I can. It's going to going to be a wide casing on the on the two sides with a little bit wider casing on the top and a a board across the top um, to okay. to cap the uh, cap the casing. Okay. All right. I'd entertain that motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner McFarland. Let me call this vote. Uh, Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. And Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll make a note of that, Alvin, since I don't have a file. And if I find it, I'll make the note on it uh, that that is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want to mention we didn't receive any comments on that particular matter. Okay. All right. Now we're going to move to new public hearings. Uh, and just a reminder that these, there won't be votes on any of these. These will all be continued to the next meeting, which is, uh, Is it July 1st? Yes, July 1st is the next meeting. July 1st. Is the next July 1st. July 1st. Um, so this is, this is a, a, an application for certificate of, uh, it's not checked off. Um, so uh, this is Tina Quagliato Sullivan from the city of Springfield. We're Jump here. In there, Tina. <laughs> We're here with the property owner. Um, Alvin and I thought that there was a possibility that this might be under non-applicability, but okay. he, he suggested that we appear just to sort of be sure and, and clear that with you folks. Okay, perfect. Then tell us what, what you're doing. Sure. So I'm here with the property owner, Dr. Starnes, um, and she, I think, already introduced herself. Yep. And so the plan here is to install a jack to support. So there's a damaged column there. And I think there are photos attached, but I can certainly share my screen mm -hmm. to show that to you folks. If that's helpful. If you'd like. Sure. Um, we would basically be pulling down the existing column. I'm just trying to find the right photo right there. You can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, the plan would be to epoxy the pull the column down, epoxy what's there, um, and repair it. Take the brick pier down. Like, like. Oh, I got these. Sorry. Um, I don't know what. Yeah. Uh, take the take the brick down. Either reuse the brick the salvage brick as best we can. If not, we would replace to match. Yep. Again, we would repair all of this to match and the existing column would be repaired and um, put back in. Okay. There's also plans to replace, there are two entrances, one here, and then another one on the other side of the entryway just to replace the asphalt roofing there. Yep. And then um, there, they had previously gotten a CPA grant to do a bunch of repointing of the brick around the building. Mm -hmm. We did not know that when we initially funded them. So their contractor, they, the contractor that they have right now under CPA funding would do a significant amount of that. And the city would do what's remaining to be sure that we're just not paying for duplicative work there. And then this concrete pad at the end of the ramp would also be replaced to match. So the intention here is to sort of replace everything to match and have consideration for the historic elements that are already right. no, there. No changes in material or design? No, other than, you know, the brick would, if, if we can't reuse the salvage brick, it would obviously be replaced to match. Okay. Any question, questions from commissioners? No, actually, we, we, we can have, I would entertain a motion to accept, to consider this application under non-applicability. Uh, we can do that today. We don't have to continue so for, for that. Okay, is there a second? Second. Say, so is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, this is, uh, I'm going to just mark non-applicability on here. 
Uh, let me call a vote. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. And Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll cons that application is considered not under non-applicability. Great. I assume that means then we do not have to show up for a second meeting. Is that That's accurate? Correct. That's okay. correct. Yep. You're all set. Thank you very much. All right. Next we have 211, 213 Worthington Street installation of a mural to a, to a brick facade. An application for a certificate of appropriateness to put a mural on the east side of the building. So who's here to speak to this application? Uh, Evan Plotkin and John Simpson and um, the building owner, Ed Kenny, is also um, here as well. Okay, well, fill us in. Sure. Um, um, are you all familiar um, with the property and the wall that it's a subject wall and uh, we submitted um, the rendering that John did. John is, is on this call, as I said. Mm -hmm. uh, so he could, he could um, explain to you some of the thematic um, elements of the, of the mural. I'm not sure that you need to have that. I think um, what I think you, it's important to know is that uh, the original uh, grant that we got from um, the state uh, was to try to uh, restore some of the uh, older designs or, or logos that were on that wall. Um, some of them are so faded you can't see them and it's impossible to restore. And, and I think there's not a lot of interest in seeing necessarily photographic um, um, logos of Kodak and um, Polaroid and all these different, there was, there was a photographic uh, store in, in that building at one time. And so I, it, was, it was really a billboard for, for their business. But that led to um, trying to preserve some of the elements of, the, um, of that original sort of motif um, by okay. um, painting in some of those elements, but also maybe, um, but also incorporating um, a lot of Springfield's um, um, uh, first um, different people who are important in the Springfield history. And if you look at the rendering, um, John could kind of walk you through some of the, the people who are gonna be in there. This is subject to change. Um, it's kind of a moving thing. We're developing it as we go, but um, this is what we have right now. And um, it's, we got every, everything from, you know, Dr. Seuss to John Brown to, um, to um, you know, a, a variety Eddie of- Eddie Shore, Carol Ed, Fredericks, Eddie, and Peter Copperdale, yeah. Rolls Royce. So, you know, John could, do you, do you want to hear more about what our ideas well, are for the mural or? Well, how, you just, you just said this is subject to change, which is, could present a problem for the historic commission. Because so, we're, uh, we're, we're supposed to know what it's going to be before we can approve it. Right. So, well, I mean, we understand what you're planning, but right. if we okay well, so, one thing and then it so, changes. So, for example, we might change um, Joe Shabelli, who is, is on the plan for um, another person. I'm not saying we're doing that, <laughs> but, but there, there are um, some things that, you know, we, we need to ask permission from some people, some families before we can put them up there. So, um, but this is what we have right now. The idea I think is more thematic um, that okay. we're, we're, we're really capturing the history of Springfield and some of the luminaries who um, had a lot to do with some of the things that make Springfield a unique and great place. Um, we had a lot of very uh, celebrated international people in Springfield and um, we want to, have this be um, a really beautiful, you know, a welcoming to Springfield. The, the banner on the top has the, the, the GB plane pulling a banner, welcome to Springfield. Um, we think that this uh, Stern Square area is um, really a connector to the rest of the downtown. Um, I've been a, a, a long time proponent of um, improving that neighborhood um, for years. I own 41 Taylor Street. I'm responsible for having the uh, model car put in Duryea Way. 
Um, so my, my interests are to preserve the historic integrity of that area, especially Stern Square. Um, I think you know, some of the abstract art that has been put on the murals in this district um, are not necessarily my taste. I won't pass judgment on it, but um, certainly doesn't lend to any historic character at all, which is we're trying to bring something more um, in line with um, the city's history um, okay. to this property. Okay. And specifically Stern Square too, with the reference to the Puritan by Augustus St. Gaudin and stuff, which is uh, not located there anymore, but for many years was. Um, and some of the things that were just right there uh, make people think about that and about Forest Park and stuff. And a lot of Springfield's 51st yeah. putting them in, in some sort of way where they look like old yeah. photographs. Um, but what you have to think about it as like a site specific installation, because since we've uh, planned on doing this wall, another mural popped up right next to it. So it's sandwiched in between two really brightly colored walls. So I feel like as a site specific installation, we'll try to bring back everything we can of the ads that are there, but try to tastefully integrate it into the paintings that are on both sides of it. Yeah, I'm not sure how a mural fits into historic perspective. So this will be an interesting discussion. Um, is, are there any commissioners that have questions of the petitioners? Well, I, I think what makes this particular issue interesting is the existence of these historic ads that have been there on the side of that wall for a long time. So if something was to go through uh, with the mural, you would definitely want to incorporate those in the artistic expression to uh, give some authenticity to something that's already there and almost restore it in a way. Uh, and, and it's amazing because those ads actually match the colors on the walls to the left and the right of it. Some of them are really bright yellow and different really bright colors. And those could be the specific things that tie it together. Okay. And some of them are so faded that there's no way you could reproduce them. And there's also, you know, quite a lot of um, imperfection to that wall. I think you would all agree um, that the wall in its present state um, does not um, lend anything to the district. In fact, it's a detraction from the district. And um, I have a good picture of it I can share on the screen here if you want to see. We have, we have, I have the pictures in front of me. Yeah, I took um, one today, really clear. Right, right. It's, it's that, like I said, I've never, uh, in the nine years I've been on the commission, I've never been suggested that, that a mural be painted on a, a you know, in, in a historical perspective. So it's going to be an interesting discussion. Uh, however, I do believe what that what exists there I see I can see some point for you know restoring what exists there and uh, but you know what it's uh, we got what this is why we have public uh, hearings and why we're gonna put this out for public commentary and um, if there's and I'm sure it will be well done by the way but um, I'll be doing it also with my assistants and I teach a class at UMass uh, called the Springfield Renaissance Mm -hmm. where I'll have the, like the students who are the most able at painting will be assisting in it and developing the themes. And we also have uh, Wayne Faniff and Joe Carvalho who've been advising us on some of the historical connections to the neighborhood and the things that okay. we want to Okay. Um, well, sure. we, uh, is there any, been any, any, uh, go ahead, Alvin. Yes. Yeah, so I got a letter late this afternoon from the Springfield Preservation Trust. If you like, I can read this into the record. Okay. Do, do I have it here? I don't think I no, do. it came in late today. So uh, okay, go ahead and read that into the record, please. Okay, so it reads, uh, "Dear Springfield Historical Commission, the Springfield Preservation Trust Board of Directors has voted to submit a letter regarding the the request for a mural at two eleven Worthington Street. The building known as the Driscoll Block was built in eighteen ninety four." and is on the National Register of Historic Places and is a, is a local historic district. The trust encourages restoration of the existing faded advertising signage, which has been there for more than 70 years. We do not support adding a contemporary mural. Historic buildings should not be the canvas for new murals. Thank you for your consideration, uh, Derek Strahan, president. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so- if there's nothing else to add, uh, well, I, I have plenty to add to that to that statement. Yeah, go ahead. Like yeah, please. So, so um, I think that maybe some of you don't know the work that John and I have done 
uh, with public art and, and uh, the investment we've made. By the way, we do this under our nonprofit, City Mosaic. This is not something that I'm doing uh, for a living or, or, you know, or profiting from. Um, we are both involved. John is a paid artist, um, and some of the proceeds from the funding that we get will pay for the artist to do the work. But uh, I just want, for the record, to know that Evan Plotkin is doing this as a as a concerned citizen to improve the the, um, the quality of the downtown and to to make it more um, um, in, enlivening and and, and um, um, this is a this is a an important district in our city as far as uh, restaurants and entertainment. It's part of the um, um, the TDI district that Mass Development has been pursuing um, and, and funding many of the programs there. Um, there's been a huge investment in the Duryea Way, of course, which I had a lot to do with creating. Um, and the um, to leave the, I mean, it is almost impossible, even with the best, I think John is probably one of the most talented muralists anywhere. Um, and it is just not possible to restore all those images. Um, and what we said was that we were gonna install, restore as many of them as we can, and then create a motif of photographic motif. So in other words, some of the pictures uh, or the, paint, the pieces that he's gonna do are going to look like a piece of film um, so that there's reference to the, the uh, photographic um, motif. Record, sure. There's also, um, um, that he can paint in, for example, an old Kodak camera, because you could see that there probably was pictures of Kodak cameras or other um, uh, puzzle blocks and everything. Yeah, sure. different types of different types of cameras. But you the the, the preservation trust should understand that this was a billboard for a uh, for a camera shop. There's nothing historic really about that necessarily. There's a lot of more important history about Springfield that I think we should celebrate besides a photographic store that used to be there. And I think what we're doing is not only capturing uh, a lot of the important history of Springfield, but some of the contemporary important people, more contemporary like Joe Chabelli and, and some of the, the great you know iconic um, uh, athletes from, from Springfield that will be part of this, mo uh, part of this collage of of different um, things, it'll be obviously very well um, done, um, and and the uh, composition will be something that is is really beautiful. Um, I don't know that any of these other abstract works that have been going up in Stern Square have um, had this kind of scrutiny from the Preservation Trust um, or or anyone else for that matter. But um, I'd like to. I would suggest that our the rendering that we put forward is probably you know represents more uh, of a historic nature than certainly many of the abstract works that now exist in that in that district. Yeah, so, the the, the unfortunate fortunate or unfortunate uh, Evan is is that this is on a historic uh, district. Uh, some things aren't subject to the scrutiny at all. I, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I mean, we have to have public hearings and we have to have votes and we have to have motions. Um, it's, you know, and we do understand that you're, you know, you're, what you're trying to do is brighten up and, and liven up that little part of Springfield. And yeah, uh, you know, I shouldn't we, have we, done we, the stuff in Court Square around the, yeah. all right, sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have done any of those murals with the Wizard of Oz and stuff, you know? Yeah, so, I, yeah. I think, but, you know, listen, I, listen, listen uh, uh, John, is it John that's sitting with you? Yes. John, it, it, we, we can't be, we cannot use what anybody does anywhere else relative to what happens in a historic district. And so unfortunately that, that just isn't part of what's going on here. I don't hear a, you know, I don't necessarily hear a, a big negative here. I mean, I understand, I can understand what that letter was about, but we have to open it to public you know, by law, it has to be open to public commentary. We have to submit that to the record. We have to make a motion. We have to vote, and that'll okay. happen. That'll happen at the next meeting. Um, and before that happens, we'll, I'll allow you to, to uh, you know, you'll be able to speak again. And, and if any changes, the only thing I've heard that 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 I'm somewhat 
moderately concerned with, I already stated that because you said that it might not be that. And in, on a, in a historic thing that comes in front of us, we're supposed to know exactly what it's gonna be. But don't, I'm not concerned with that right now. Um, what we have to do now is I'm gonna ask for a motion to continue to the next meeting that'll allow people, you know, the public to comment, including yourselves and any, you know, anybody you have that wants to comment. Um, you know, don't overlook that. If you have supporters, have them comment. In, but we have to be open for, for people who are not supporting it to comment too. And anything that comes in, we'll, we'll uh, put on the record in the next meeting. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Uh, okay. Okay. Are there any, could I ask if any of the other commissioners have, uh, could speak to it? it uh, just uh, let me know how generally you feel now subject to further discussion. Well, it's, it's uncharted waters in a way, because as uh, Commissioner Walsh said, we've never really encountered anything like this. So there are bylaws, but there's also another aspect to it. So. Could, I, could I also mention one other thing? This will be my last point. That's okay. No, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I think that if you look at that wall, that wall was an adjoining wall to another building that was formerly in that parking lot. Um, nice that sure. building was demoed. And so what you have is the exterior surface of the building that was connected to another wall. So that wasn't even ever meant to be, you know, seen from the public um, or, you know, because there was supposed to be, there was a building there. So it's an right. unfinished wall. And I think they put this advertisement on it to, to you know, sell cameras. Um, we need to look forward um, to a to a new Springfield that's that is that is hopefully the Renaissance of Springfield, and um, that let's not, um, you know, hopefully all of you would would agree that that beautifying that wall, which is in pretty bad shape right now, um, and making it something that we can all be proud of, because it it exemplifies our history. That's the important thing, and I think you need to make that front and center, and not. Um, anything else, in my opinion. So okay. that's well said, noted. Um, if, if, if there's any other commissioners that have anything to add or any questions, um, we'll, I, I'd entertain a motion to continue to the July 1st meeting to allow, to allow for public commentary. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'm going to reverse it this time. Commissioner Walsh votes yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes, sir. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Okay, so we have continued that till the, the July 1st meeting, and we'll see you guys there. Thank you. Okay. Thank God. Okay, next we have nineteen Florentine Gardens. An application for appropriateness replace six windows on the second floor. No change in the wood casings. Okay, proposing to replace six windows on the second floor of a home at 19 Florin Gardens. Current windows have no weights. Many are bent beyond repair. It takes two to open a window. The current windows are double hung and no grid work. We are replacing them with Harvey Majesty windows. The Harvey windows are double hung, no grid work with four screen exterior. They will have half screens will be identical in size to the current windows. Lower sash will sit directly on the sill. Phil Bolio and Sons will be doing the project. We hired them because they've done a lot of work in the historic area and are familiar with the requirements of the historic district. Mr. Bollier has assured us that the majesty windows in this installation meet the requirement of the historic district. If any questions or concerns. Okay. That actually sounds pretty good to me. Um, you know, the description of the windows just sounds like they're historically appropriate. Um, you know, we'll take it have to take a look at I just double check the style, but that, that sounds like it's 
It sounds like the right thing. Uh, would the petitioner just like to fill us in if there's any other details relative to that? Hi, I'm Paul Ryan. I live in 19 Florentine Gardens. We've been here about 15 years. And um, no, I mean, that's it. Um, we would like to fix them, but they're beyond repair. So, you know, we're going to, we, we picked a window from the list that we got from the uh, public list of acceptable windows and, okay. you know, tried to meet the requirements as listed. So. Well, and you one of the big ones you met that the, the sill, the, the sash will be meeting the sill, which is one of the, Mm -hmm. one of the, the, the visuals. Um, if there's nothing else to add, any commissioners have any questions? Uh, hearing none, that entertain a motion to uh, continue the application for a certificate of appropriate 19 Florentine Gardens to replace six windows on the second floor. So moved. Okay. Second. Back in. Okay, thank you, Tom. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing none, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes, sir. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. So we'll continue that to allow for public commentary and we'll bring it up at the next meeting and we'll see you then. So okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, number 10, Cornell. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness at 10 Cornell Street, replacement of two windows in the stairway, no size change, no, I'm not sure what that says. Aluminum clad exterior, dark gray, Pella lifestyle stained wood interior, existing trim left in place. No grills, I think that's it. Okay, is uh, Marie on with us? Or who's speaking on this application? Anybody? I don't believe I see the property owner. Um, I'll give them a call. See okay, I'll just put it, put it aside for a minute. Okay, let's move to 107 Maplewood. It's an application. This is, this is John Mayock. I'm on the call for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, certificate for uh, application for certificate of appropriateness 107 Maplewood, John and Sandra Mack. East side of the house, run the AC line set cover from above third floor window to condenser, mount the condenser between 18 and 40 inches above the ground. Okay. Uh, I, I, I did send some more specifics uh, this morning. Uh, if they didn't make it to you, um, Alvin's probably a pretty busy guy. So uh, no, he did, did make it to me. You, okay. you, you did a rendering. Yes, yes, I drew on some photographs there to kind of show what the route of the line set cover would be in order to hide that as much as possible under the eaves and then along the back of the house, okay. and then have the condenser box mounted uh, in the back corner of the house where it is covered uh, from view by both our fence and our shed. Okay. Uh, uh, Alvin, can you, do you have those? Sorry, John. Uh, Alvin, can you put those up so look, all the commissioners can see the renderings that he gave us today? Yeah, give me just a moment. Okay. I looked at them when you sent them to me, but I don't have them prepared to pull them up to share. Yeah, give me just a moment. Because it, it did say that you were going to, uh, you were going to paint. Yes, yes. We match certainly the house. Yeah, we, we do. We don't want uh, the white line set cover exposed on our home. Uh, we want, you know, that that's a pretty easy step to paint the line set cover uh, to match the house. Right. Cam so camouflage that, that as much as we can. Okay. So, uh, Alvin, can you scroll it back up, please? Thank you. So this picture, that black line on the third floor won't be a black line. It'll be a match. <laughs> that is correct. Line, but, it will, but it will be there. Yeah, I wanted to just show the route. You know, yeah, I understand. That, I'm just, I'm just noting for anybody else who's, watch, who's watching that that's going to be painted to match the house. That is correct. Now, is it going to just come down over the roof and kind of wrap? How are they going to wrap that around the gutter there? Or what are they going to do? Well, I'm, I'm 
figured my, <laughs> the, uh, the HVAC gentleman I'm working with uh, on this said we'd be able to make those uh, turns. Yeah, with and the then, AC line. And so then under under the eave, it'll be it'll be painted dark to match the, the eave. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so okay. that we have basically the you know you see the colors on the house, um, you know wherever it will match the color of whatever that line is traveling over. Right. So it's not going to catch your eye like that black line does. But I, I understood what you were doing. <laughs> That's correct. I, the the black line is just there for illustration purposes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Can you scroll down, Alvin? See now, this next one is is well say. So it's going to come down this this kind of back corner of the house. Yeah, I'd like to hide it as much as possible. Sure. So that back corner is not very visible for for from the street okay. at all. And then that condenser box, as you can see, is tucked in a corner where it's covered by both the fence and then to the right of that photograph. That's that's my shed right there. Okay. So the only way you can see that condenser box is if you're standing in that little area there. Got uh, between it. the house and the shed. Okay. Uh, right. Walsh, may I ask a question? Please do, Commissioner. John, can you go back to the uh, first picture, the front of the house, the, or the the uh, top? Yeah, Sorry. exactly where the yeah, back Sorry. line is. Now, if you look, you have um, you know the the line goes straight down, but can it follow on a forty five degree angle with that eave and then go down there so it's less intrusive? Or would uh, that actually, uh, pose some I, kind of? Commissioner Walsh, I didn't think of that. Uh, yeah. I actually like that option better. Yeah, so do I, and I didn't think of it either, John. Yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, that that's actually even more camouflaged. Yeah, and it actually may cut off some of the length of the line, which is advantageous to us because I'm I do have my concern that we're going to be over the fifty foot. Or when I did my measurements, we were close to that. So that actually works to our advantage doing that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, I'm sure if they can shape it around that gutter system there, then they're going to be able to go down, run down that eave as well, or down that. Um, yeah. yeah oh, I like that option better. Okay. Definitely be uh, less intrusive. And, you know, if you're going the camouflage route anyway, um, that's the way to go is that less intrusive option. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay. But, well, I think that's all, unless there's anything else you want to add. I think uh, we can, I can entertain a motion to continue the application for a certificate of appropriateness at 107 Maplewood Terrace regarding the, uh, what I was saying? The installation of the air conditioning duct work. Um, yeah. can... So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. Continue to the uh, July 1st meeting and we'll see you then. Fantastic. Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate the help. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, did we hear from uh, Cornell? No. Only now. Okay. Okay. Next is seventy Randolph. This is a certificate for an, an application for a certificate of appropriateness, 70 Randolph Street, Allison Guzman, replace the garage door. Is Allison on? I see you're on. If, if, if you could just yes, tell, us, I'm on. tell us what your project is. I'm, I'm reading through it, but you can give us a, a just kind of tell us what you're doing. Um, the garage door is really old and it came crashing down. So oh, no. we had to uh, secure it as quickly as possible for the safety of the um, the family. So we reached out to Window World and um, had it replaced. Okay. And you, you replaced it. And I see that the original, of course, the original door of historic picture was nothing like what, when you bought the house, it had that, it had already been replaced, correct? Correct. Yeah. And that, and that was, we had one of the pictures here with the older door 
but no windows in the door, just a regular panel garage door? Yeah. Yes, panel. And you just kind of replaced it with the same thing, only in aluminum? Correct. Okay. All right, any commissioners have any questions? No? Um, Allison, this is one we're just going to you know, continue to the next meeting to allow for any public commentary relative to the replacement of the door. So I'd entertain a, a motion to continue the application for certificate of appropriateness at 70 Randolph Street to replace the garage door. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'm going to call the vote from the top this time. Commissioner Walsh, which yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Crowell? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's continued to the first to allow for public commentary, and we'll see you then. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Got any news for me there, Alvin? I I have uh, the wife on the line. Uh, give me just a moment. Okay. Okay, I mean, I guess we can continue to the next item. I'm going to try to call the husband now and see if we can. Get okay, him. well, this, we're, this is uh, now we're going to the environmental review for 5153 Bay Street. Okay, let's see what I have for this. Uh, full rehab of the historic structure doors and all windows replaced and restored. Um, Is there someone here from the representing the 5153 Bay Street? Yes, I'm um, Gerald Glass, the contractor. I'm right here. I'm here. Okay. Oh, Steve, so you're breaking up. Is that Lisa Goodman speaking? Because it's breaking up. Now. Is Gerald here? Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm on. Go ahead. I, I can't understand a word you're saying, Lisa. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm at work in this terrible life I hear, but if Gerald is on, I'll let Gerald talk. Okay, no, it's fine. I just want—I just wanted to let you know that I'm having a hard time understanding. Um, it's a little garbled. Um, did commissioners go take a look? At the is on the yes, he is. Contractor. Yep. He can talk. And okay. I think I heard him come in. Okay, that's fine. Um, was there a site visit to this property? Yeah, it's very Councilor Finn and I. Yeah, I'm sorry. The the what, what was this? What was the this? I'm going to say what was the status of that? We we visited the site. Um, I mean, last meeting we actually as a, as a commission approved yes. the doors. What was in question it's was Alvin. Right. Alvin came out. I was just, I knew we approved something. I'm just looking. We, yeah, yeah, we approved the doors. What we didn't have was um, they presented that they were going to replace all the windows. What was in question is 
which windows were going to stay and be repaired, which ones were going to be replaced. Okay. Uh, they said they were going to replace them all with the standard window. We just didn't have the spec. Drell okay. wasn't able to get the spec. So uh, that's what he's kind of sent to uh, Alvin. Okay. Well, Alvin is trying to reach a different one here. Let's see what I have in the file. Okay. Repair and reglaze 24 windows. Manufacture 14 windows. Specification sheet will be used. Yeah, he, I'm going to try to get Alvin to put that up on the screen when he can. So I don't have it. He sent it in the uh, meeting materials in the yeah, just, in zip with the Pella spec window. Okay, Alvin, can you put that up on the screen first? I'm on. Alvin? Yes, give me just a Yeah, give me just a minute. Okay. I'll put it up in just a moment. Thank you. Everyone see? Yeah. Is that all yeah. we have? Is just the pic? Yeah. Do we have a picture? Uh, give me just a moment. Okay, I can't. All right, moving sashes, just Pella. Okay. Are these are these in, in, internal grids or external grids? So on their order sheet, they're not going to have grids at all. Oh, they're not going to have grids at all. I mean, this is just a stock picture. This isn't what they're actually. Right. Well, that's why I was asking. That's right. We looked at these last week, and the originals don't, don't have grids. I guess that's yeah. Good. The order. If you look at the Pella order, <laughs> yeah. black exterior, and it's just one over one, no grids. Okay. All right. Is that correct, Terrell? Yes. Okay. Perfect. I just can't read that quite. Let me try and read some of that. <laughs> Thanks for doing that for the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> Stereo finished black. Okay. All right. Do any commissioners have any questions? Is there any other anything else we have to add to this? Um I guess the, 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 the motion for this has to be what, Alvin? Uh, just like any other, I mean, even though this property is in the National Register District, I mean, just like any local um, district property, you guys can uh, approve or deny. Okay. I didn't know if we had to refer otherwise. Okay. I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve the windows for 5153 Bay Street. As... Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. Yay! Yay! That's right. That's right. <laughs> well done. Thank you for doing such good work for that building. <laughs> Thanks, Drell. Thanks, Alvin. Thanks, commissioners. You're all welcome. Uh, okay, we now let's back up to. Uh... Okay. 
go back to um, 10 Cornell. Oh, thank you. Okay. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness. Replace the two windows in the stairway. No size change, no grill, aluminum plaid exterior, dark gray, Pella lifestyle stain, wood interior. Okay. Is there a rendering of these? Is there any picture of these or no? Um, I don't have one, and I thought that Pella Windows was going to be attending tonight. And well, I, I thought somebody was here. No, maybe they're not here now. Come and go. Um, I'm just looking through the file here. To look at the pictures. So these pictures are going to be in the stairway. This. Oh, here we go. Are there, are there two windows within this picture? Yes. So um, if you see that little jettison, yes, those two windows. Those two windows? Correct. All right, and, and what what are they? Is that just a double hung, no grid, one over one? Um, actually, when we moved in, that's been plexiglass ever since we moved in. Okay. Um, the big one. Yeah. And then the other one. Is, had, had that been stained glass at one time, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, the as long as I've been there, it's just been plexiglass. No, I understand, but a lot of times when they had stained glass, they put plexiglass on the outside. Uh, but if the stained glass is gone, that's gone is done. Um, okay. In the, in these, the dark gray is is. Uh, I just make the picture's not in color, so we can't tell. But the color is appropriate. Um, and well, any, we can can see the the shades of the colors, which uh, gives us a little bit of an insight, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, on the bottom, yeah. Because it looks like there's some that like that bottom window look, looks like something's altered there, but you're not replacing that one. You're replacing the top. No, I don't even know where that window kind of goes to. I don't know oh. anything <laughs> about it. It, it I, I think it's like something must have changed in the house because it must be under the stairway or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Not in a closet or something. In the uh, Harry Potter Harry bathroom. Potter room, yeah. yeah. So that's where all the money is. Uh, I wish. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? Um, okay, it sounds fairly straightforward. Um, any commissioners have any questions? Xander, I just had a question. I can't quite see from the from the uh, outside picture. What what are the rest of the what are the colors of the rest of the windows? White. The windows themselves are white. Um, the inside the is like painted yellow from the previous homeowner. Everything's yellow. And on all the metal casings and everything are white. If I could have done white, I would do white, but I've been told that they can't be white. Well, Xander, are, are all the, how many of the, some of the windows look like they're already replacement windows or is that just a? Yes, that was the top. But we just kind of went through that and it got denied on the bottom. But right. these are not like, yeah, I like see. A, That's so, right. and I decided to go with Pella. They said they had a good rapport with you. So, and I was just trying to make it more no, efficient. Good. Okay. Hmm? All right. I understand. That's Can they be white to go with the rest of the house or do, do they have to be dark gray or? Well, White is not, it, it just, white is seldom, yeah. if ever, appropriate. Okay. Generally, property. from the historical documents and photographs of the time well, periods, we want to see something in a darker color, like a black or a bronze, um, you know, and those, those types of colors are appropriate for that inner part of the window. Whereas that outer part, you know, a lighter color is more appropriate on a uh, Queen Anne stick style like you're showing me here. Okay. Well, so, you know, I think we have enough information. I mean, it, we just need to open it to public commentary. And I, we, I would entertain a motion to continue the application for certificate appropriateness at 10 Cornell Street. 
uh, to the July 1st meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Uh, let me call the vote. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. And Commissioner McFarland? Yes, sir. Okay. That will continue to allow for public commentary until the 1st of July. Now, one question. Does the um, yes. Bella, the Pella window representative need to be on that call next time or because I um, thought they were going to be here today? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't hurt to have them and okay. it doesn't hurt if there's anything else you want to add at the next meeting before we have a motion to vote, you should be ready to do that. So, okay. Great. Uh, if, they, if they are petitioning on your behalf and you're not on the call, I just need a letter stating that they can represent on your behalf. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. All right. No, have a good you. evening. You too. All right. Let's see. We're getting there. We have now the... Uh, did I see that the 9 York Street aren't going to be here? Yes, they're not going to be here. Um, they uh, petitioned for or asked for a letter of extension, 30-day letter of extension. Which they provided, right? Yes. Okay. So do we need to vote on that? It's not necessary. Okay. And we have now 20 Shumway Street, demolition of residential home and accessory buildings. Yes, hello, I'm Jason Summer. Uh, I am the uh, owner uh, of um, 20 Shumway Street. Thank you. This is an application My for exemption from the preservation of historical significant building or the demo delay at uh, 20 Shumway Street. Let me just see it. Okay. Now you sent us some pictures, that's for sure. How long has the, the building not been in use for the buildings? We're just buying the property, so we, we have no knowledge of that. I mean, yeah. the, okay. the current owner has, has never used it as well. It's the Car City on Boston Road, owns yeah. that whole parcel. They've never used uh, any of those as well. As you can see, they're in disrepair. Um, yeah. Is an understatement. Um, it's not in the historic district. It's not, I don't believe it's a historically significant property. Um, any commissioners have any questions? No questions? Did I lose three? Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, um, I, we can, you know, entertain a motion to, to accept the application for exemption from the preservation of historic significant buildings on uh, 20 Shumway Street. Did I get that motion? No move. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion to, to for the application for an exemption from the preservation of historic significant buildings? Hearing none, uh, Commissioner Crow? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, we have approved the lifting of the of the demo delay. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, thank you. Great night. Thank you. Alvin, we just get a letter from the commission. Is that all we need from you? Yes, that's correct. I'll draft a letter sometime next week. Great. Thank you all very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we have. Uh... This may not be on your sheet, but it is on the, the revised agenda that I sent out to you guys. Yeah. I have, um, I believe it's uh, 85 Westminster Street. Yeah. And uh, this property, um, they are receiving funds from our McKnight um, Home Restoration Program. 
So because it's it's uh, city funds going to a property owner, we did want to again have the uh, uh, basically put it out there to the public uh, that, that we're giving out these funds. So it, it is under non applicability, but we did want to put it on the agenda for. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Transparency. That's the word I was looking for. That's the one we need. And so this is not. Is someone here to speak on that? The eight for eighty five Westminster. We do have the property owner. Okay. And this is another one I don't have a file for. See if I can share the screen. Give me this moment. Please, please do. Application for certificate of non-applicability, 85 Westminster, repair and replace any damaged siding, repair existing windows, on trim add storm windows, repair back door, repaint areas of the foundation, exterior paint of the house. Uh, are there any other details relative to you know no change in in material or or design? Is, is uh, someone... No, sir. Yes, I'm. I'm Cindy. I'm the homeowner of eight, okay. eighty-five. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, no, no other changes. Right, but re the same. You're going to be using the same. Oh, here we go. Yes. There we go. Just bear with me for a minute while I just scan through this. Replace any damage, rotted wood, including but any trim work. Um, okay. All right. Do any commissioners have any <coughs> any questions of the of the petitioner? Okay. This is repair the back door, existing window sash, removing paint, glazes required, reglaze sash, refit repairs necessary. Replace cords, weather strip, add two two track Larson storm windows to windows currently missing storms. Okay, all right. Um, is that the, everything, Cindy? Did we see everything yes. that you're doing there? Okay. Good. Yes, that's everything. Okay. Do you have any questions from commissioners? Um, no. Okay. All right. I would. Uh, I actually think everything as written falls under non applicability. And I believe it does. If any commis commissioners have any different opinion, let me know. No, I agree. Okay, and then I would entertain a motion just to accept this application for a certificate of non applicability for 85 okay. Westminster. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? On the motion, hearing none, uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Belton? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, I think you're, you're all set under non-applicability. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Cindy. Thank you so much. All right, and we have, uh, uh, 121 Dartmouth Terrace, non-compliance, replacement of garage door, replacement windows, and reorientation of sites. Okay, this is relative to a, a couple of stop work orders. So Commissioner McFarland wanted me to add this to the agenda, so I don't know if he wants to say a few words before I can um, bring up the file. Yes, uh, Alvin, you took um, several pictures over the uh, last month or so um, on the property. Could you show me the um, before and after on the carriage house doors, please? Okay, give me just a moment.
Is someone here to represent these, this property? No, this is a non-compliance matter. So this okay. is- Okay, I just didn't know if someone was gonna be on to yeah. discuss it. Okay. Uh, give me just a moment. Okay. That picture was taken on uh, the second of. Yes. So I'll try to find a picture of the uh, photos that are scattered here, but um, this is the new door that they uh, have installed. So this is actually the, the, the previous door that was uh, inside the garage. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you have a picture of it when they were uh, still intact about a month ago from the outside? Yeah, you got to give me just a moment because I don't have everything put together. I, I'm sorry to put you on this, this spot. Yeah. I, I really am. I apologize. Let's Well, they have a history of, of uh, not. Oh, there you go. See the doors off. In the there distance. you go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There you go. Wow. Nice door. Beautiful. Look at all of those lights, those original 150 something year old lights on that. I just count 48 per, per door. Um, so that's sort of the latest issue is the garage doors, but I did give them stop work orders for uh, uh, windows that were replaced, uh, basement windows, and then there's one window on the second floor that was replaced. Um, then they also, this porch that you can see in this photo here, they reoriented the steps from the front to the, to the rear of the porch without commission approval. And the lattice? Yes, the lattice was also uh, excuse me, uh, replaced as well. Yeah. So, okay. So what are our options here? So it's a matter of how you guys want to move forward. I, again, uh, I've sent out three stop work orders. They have not responded to, uh, to any of them. Well, let me ask a good attorney, shoot Chuck, but what are our options here? Except that you're muted still. You're gonna unmute, Counselor. There you go. My good. Oh, there I am. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. I did not get to um, look into the stop work orders and what what we can do do about that. I was really busy this this week with um, actually the murals for um, downtown. So um, I'm sure. I, I can get you with some. Um, I can get you you uh, an opinion or, or just what what happens um, by next or next week, early next week. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I think this is, you know, there's, I'm looking through this file and over the last four years or six, eight, seven years, there's- Sounds like they have a history of- A his multiple stop work back orders back. going back to 2014, I think. Yeah. Which, which means they, they know what they're supposed to be doing. They're just not bothering. Yeah. I think the current um, homeowner uh, has been there maybe two or three years. Okay. Um, so only three of those stop work orders pertain to them. Uh, well, there's probably another stop work order pertaining to an, a, a previous owner, but okay. um, 
either way, if there's three of them that pertain to them, they're still not talking yeah. to us and they need to. So whatever you can give us. Uh, I'll give it to, I'll send it to Alvin early, early next week. Yeah. You know, instead, then we'll talk about it at the next meeting or yeah. whatever. Um, I, do believe, I do believe we have to do something. Obviously we can't just let. Yeah. Know, it's just, Definitely. You know, so I have to do something. Um, because it's all the, those things taken one at a time, if they'd done them right one at a time, then this, this wouldn't be happening. Those got garage door, the ones that came off of there were beautiful. Now, I understand they may not have been able to be, but they could have replaced them with something more historically accurate instead of just a white panel. Right. Well, I think it's important we try and move quickly so that if there's a way to save the doors, if the doors are still there before he puts them in a dumpster or gives them away or smashes yeah. them up cuts them up yeah yeah well probably already done but yeah i'm not sure we can't obviously if, if we have to take if we elect to request that the law department do something legal it's going to take longer than anything we can do here tonight so um but we need we would like to know what options we have um because i think some action should be taken that's all I got for that one. Okay. Anybody? Okay. Is there anything else we're missing here, Melvin? Nope. That's all. Okay. Any other commissioners have anything else? Cindy's still on. Just wanted to see how the meetings ended. The riveting drama. She just had to stay and see what else, you know, how exciting things are. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, anyway, thank you for joining us and staying. Um, if there's nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Okay, all in favor. All right. Aye. 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 Okay. Have a good thank night, you everyone. Thank good you. Night. Thanks for joining thank us. You. All right, God bless you all. You too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Have a good night. All right, you too.